What is going on guys, DBG, and today we're going to be talking about whether or not it is worth it to lock in for the end game option pack in NBA 2K22, my team lads. So, um, yeah, genuinely, I think that this is something that a lot of people are talking about when it comes to these anniversary sets. And I think it's kind of an interesting one. I do think it's kind of an interesting one. So I'm going to be able to do it, thankfully. The last two cards are going to be really expensive, like the first half an hour, and then they're going to drop in price, as they always do. So I got 18 out of 20 here. So there are only two cards left. So these are coming out on Tuesday. So I wonder what, I reckon we get like Steph and Curry. Because we're getting an endgame option pack, I reckon Steph Curry is going to be one of the packs for Tuesday. It's going to be like Steph and somebody else. And I think Friday is going to be Ball Ball Manu Ball. Um, without any anniversary set. It's gonna be something stupid like that. But um I think the following week is gonna be endgame invincible option packs. Or not option packs, uh, super packs. But um yeah, so basically you guys can see right here there is um Shaq and Jordan, Kareem, Yanis, Simmons. Like we have all of these. But if you're looking at the price, the thing is is like these are the same. It doesn't matter which which one you go for. You get the exact same option pack for either of these, so it's not like oh you should go for the west and not the east. So just go for Jeremy's cheaper. So you're looking at Kobe. Kobe's over 100k. Wow. I sold the Kobe Bryant for 40 something k. I bought him for 20 on my. Be fair, I did that on my 30 day series. So that didn't really count. So like Kobe Bryant is that expensive. You're looking at probably 25 ish k probably for AD. Chris Stapps. So you're looking probably about 150 k. Probably around the same. Luka Doncic, probably 10 to 15. JR. JR really 30. Okay, 20. So it seems like outside of. They probably average around 20k each outside of Kobe, which is about 130. So T Mac is the cheapest by the looks of things. What's Mellow? Probably in around 20. KD. And he should be cheap. No, he's in around 20 as well. So I would say just this set right here is probably... Are you 200 to 250k? Depending on how you buy them. Which isn't actually bad. Which is actually not bad. So, you're looking at this set here. you got Ben Simmons, not that expensive. Giannis Antetokounmpo, not that expensive. Not expensive at all, in fact. Kareem shouldn't be that expensive. He's not... Jordan shouldn't be too bad. No, he's very cheap. Shaq, I think, is the most expensive one here. So, like, you're looking at Shaq at over 100k as well. I literally have both of these guys on my... I invested in both of these guys. I think I'm actually on my other account that both of you guys invested. Uh, even Taco, I don't think, is expensive. Wow, Taco's really expensive. I'm looking like close to 30 for Taco. It looks like East might be more expensive than West because of Taco. No, LeBron's cheap. Kawhi's probably cheap as well. No, Kawhi's not cheap at all. So East is more expensive than the West now. Like, you're probably paying the guts of a quarter of a million for these sets. Man, I didn't pay over 20k for a single one of these cards. <laughs> I didn't pay tw over 20 for a single one of these cards. Like, I'm getting all these for, 100, for 200k for both of these. And they're paying more than double the price. So you're probably looking between 250k and 300k for each one of these. So if you guys look right now at what they said in the dev blog. So it says here, um, 20 Mighty Man anniversary cards will find a way into two new collections. 10 players representing the Eastern Conference, 10 players representing the West. Complete these during an endgame option pack featuring player cards released in Season 8. Lads. So we got an endgame option pack featuring cards released in Season 8. So this can be very tricky. So we're looking at endgames released in Season 8. Well, on the good side, if you look at theme endgame, if you look at theme endgame, it looks like almost every endgame is above 300k. So it in fact looks like you're getting pretty good endgame cards out of these. At least two options of pretty good endgame cards. Because I'm scared that three of the options are going to be Chris Webber, Nikola Jokic, James Harden. I'm scared that three of those are actually going to be options. But if it's not, I reckon Shaq's going to be an option. Shaq's not very good. Wilt might be an option. Actually, no, Wilt was season 7. 
So it can be any end game other than Wilt Dirk, Wilt Dirk, Magic, and um, Scotty Barnes. There you are looking at the expensive ones. Um, what my prediction is, it's gonna, Andy Davis is going to be one of them. We're going to look at Luca being one of them because Luca kind of sucks. Shaq is going to be one of them. I don't see them being like God to uh, end game cards. However, if you're somebody who has, who does want an end game card in your lineup, I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't want to use end games. I'm happy with my lineup. What I don't see getting is I don't see Yao appearing. If if it ends up being Yao Taco, it's worth it. It's one million percent worth it. Go and do it. But I don't see it being Yao and Taco. I see it being more than likely Shaq. As far as bigs go, it'll be my prediction of the five is going to be Shaq, um, Kobe, Carmelo Anthony, Lamelo Ball, and Anthony Davis. Or sorry, Carmelo Anthony, J or Smith, and Anthony Davis. And in that situation, you go get yourself Kobe. You get yourself Kobe, and you go and get yourself like Melo. But um, yeah, that's kind of my thing. Is I don't think we see Kareem. I don't think we see Giannis. I don't think we see. Um, I might get like point guard or anything. Awesome. I think this is almost a guarantee. J. R. Smith being in it. So like, I'm gonna do it just for content. I'm gonna fully do it just for content. Um. I don't think in the end it's going to be the craziest thing in the world. I don't think locking in for these end games is going to really make that much of a difference. This isn't like locking in for end game will six weeks ago. Like if you locked in for end game week six weeks ago, you can legit make the argument that he's the top three power forward in the game. I don't believe it, but you can make that argument. So I don't think this is going to be one where you're going to really regret not doing it because at the same time, I would be shocked. The only way to be shocked, there's not a single one of these cards going to be better than him. This Luca right here is going to be better than every single one of those cards. Bar none. Bar none. Luca is going to be better than every one of them. So for me, I'm like, no, like, I think if you're starting right now, I would have probably advise against it. I would probably advise against it if you don't have the cards. If you've got Kobe and Shaq sitting in your collection from day one, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. If you got Kobe and Shaq, it's a no-brainer. If you've done what I've done and just been chipping away at it through the whole season, you're getting both of these sets completed for, like, I reckon I probably spent an average of 15k. I'm getting 300k for both of them complete, completely combined. 300k for both of them combined, whereas you're paying like 600, 700k now. So I'm looking at like, if you've been doing it from the start, go for it, keep going. Or if you want to profit on the cards, be my guest. But I would strongly advise against it if you are just starting today. I really would advise against locking it. So yeah, that is pretty much it, lads. Two end game a lot. Two an end game option pack coming tomorrow. Let's um it'll be interesting to see. Um it will be interesting to see what cards are in them, whether or not it's worth it. So that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.